Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to worship as we gather as part of Holy Week for the celebration of Monday Thursday tonight. Monday comes from the Greek, from the Latin word for commandment. And we hear in the Gospel of John today, Jesus' commandment on the night before he was betrayed for us to love one another. And that becomes the mark of Christians through the world to show the love for one another and that love is shared with all people. That is our Mondi. That is our commandment. So as a part of the service tonight, you will hear a story. You'll hear the story of the crucifixion preface before we get to good friday with the darkness of the cross we have the anticipation that comes on thursday as jesus gathers his closest followers and they share a meal and they flee to a garden and in the garden there is the betrayal so at the close of the service tonight we will strip the pyramids from the altar and from the pulpit as a symbol that transitions us from the commands of Monday, Thursday, and drives us into Good Friday. So there will not be a benediction tonight, as tomorrow's service is a continuation of the story, one long worship service. So at the end of the broadcast tonight, we will end in silence and reflection. So thank you for joining us as we gather as the body of Christ tonight. We will continue with our gathering song.
Friends in Christ, this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and loving one another. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving peace and reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter into the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that, that we, we are, are captive, captive to, to sin and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare your sins are forgiven. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that your sins are forgiven. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from the Old Testament book, Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Our psalm reading this evening is Psalm 22. You may follow along on screen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me, and they divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, 
do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our gospel for this evening is from John chapter 13, beginning with verse 31. Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him all at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Well, brothers, sisters, friends in Christ, grace to you all and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, these have been interesting days in all of our homes, different routines, and I imagine I have picked up a habit that many of you have picked up, that I have been watching much more television than I have watched in years. And some of that is good. I have seen many interesting and helpful programs. Last week, one I was watching was a cooking show about southern cooking, and they had a perfect episode. It was an entire episode about comfort food, about those foods that every culture around the world has specific things that certain families love to eat that make them feel connected and make them feel safe and make them feel as if the world is going to be okay. So some of you may be eating meatloaf or pasta or whatever it is in your tradition that gives you a full belly and a sense of satisfaction and gives you a chance to take a deep breath. There was one line from that program where the host said very beautifully that said, there are meals that bind us and define us that bind us together, that go beyond mere calories and define us as people together who share something. And also, in the strangeness in these days, if we are completely honest in our homes, we would like to say that if there are many people who live in our homes that everyone is calm and it's gentle and our meals are quiet and everyone is happy and no one talks over each other and no one fights or argues. But you know how it is as we've gathered in new routines. So sometimes we will laugh about how our meals actually go. Have I mentioned that I've been watching more television than normal? Since normally we are here very early on Sunday mornings, I have not turned on a Sunday morning program for years and years, but I've been watching CBS Sunday Morning, and two weeks ago they gave a snapshot of life in quarantine from the comedian Jim Gaffigan, who lives in an apartment in New York City with his wife and five children. So perhaps you will identify 
with this video. Just how are Jim Gaffigan and family doing during their second week of confinement? Let's catch up. Hi, still here <laughs> with my wife and five children on quarantine in our New York City apartment. How is it? Good, good. Every morning we wake up and we eat and then we clean and then we argue. Then we eat and clean, then we argue. Sometimes we mix it up and we argue before we eat or clean. Essentially at this point, my wife and I are running a diner. We make mediocre food for ungrateful recipients. Then we clean up and do it again. Sometimes I imagine my family and I are participating in a never ending episode of that long running show, Alice. What's the soup to Jewer? Split pea. That was the soup yes to Jewer. I would, of course, play Mel, the gruff and grumpy short order cook, but you know how to heart of gold. Fill up the saw shakers. With salt? No, with uranium. Of course with salt. My wife, Jeannie, would play the resilient and strong Alice, who's just trying to keep things going. Don didn't believe in insurance. How come? It didn't come in a six-pack. My children would play rotating roles. When they were confused or befuddled by a situation, they would play Vera. Oh, Vera! Lock up! How? Oh. If they're really sarcastic and mouthy, they would play Flo. Hey, cutie, where you been all my life? The first type of one named Born. <laughs> and believe me, they say things much worse than kiss my grits. Mail. What? Kiss my grits. <laughs> Occasionally, they're sweet. So they play the role of Tommy, Alice's son. All right, now what if I lose? Then you've learned a lesson. What? <laughs> Never listen to a 12-year-old kid. Similar to the TV show, we work unrealistic shifts that start early in the morning and seem to end real late at night. The biggest difference between us and the real show, Alice, is our episode never ends. Anyway, here's the opening title sequence to the show about my life in quarantine. And in between, I cooked and cleaned and went out of my head. Be safe, everyone. We're going to get through this. Maybe. All right, I have definitely dated myself as a child of the 70s and 80s because I really am Just about the are. same age as Tommy in that sitcom. But I think you get the point that, yeah, sometimes it's messy. And this whole binding and defining in that sitcom, it's quirky people who care for one another and love one another and are dealing with real issues. So tonight, we gather to be very honest about ourselves that we are flawed and sinful and broken people who have been forgiven, that we have been shaped by the grace and mercy of God come in the flesh as Jesus for you and for me in the midst of a story. Because we are defined by food, but we are also defined by a story that perhaps has never been more meaningful to us at this time in this place. Because embedded in this story of the Last Supper, of Jesus gathering with his disciples for a meal, we have an older story of great uncertainty. 
because the story that they've gathered to celebrate in the disciples' imperfect way is the story of freedom that happened generations and generations before of another time when the outside world seemed to be out of control, where people were afraid and they were not quite certain what was going to be happening the very next day. And it became what we call the Passover. The Passover, a meal that took place the night before freedom. It was a promise that was given to God's people on the very last day of their slavery in Egypt, where God had told Aaron and Moses to gather the people together for a meal. Now, if you think about that, if they are leaving the very next day, it must have been somewhat mayhem in all of these houses with people arguing and voices raised and bags being packed and getting ready to go out into something that terrified everyone, stepping into a world they don't understand. But in the very midst of it, what God commands them is he tells the people to stop. In the midst of it all, prepare a meal. Sit down at a table and share lamb and share bread and remember the day that's going to mark the rest of your days. In Exodus that we heard read earlier today, it says that this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you that this event of your freedom is going to change your very calendar and the very rotation of your lives and you are going to be marked and claimed and reminded in the midst of the fear, in the midst of very real death, in the midst of the unknown, you'll be lifted up by the promise that God is present in your frightening freedom. So generations later, when Jesus' disciples, almost in sitcom style in their bickering and they're trying to find a room to share a final meal, it's actually the meal that they are remembering. It's this meal that has been shared year after year after year after a year to define a people, to define the Jewish people as a group whom God has saved and whom God has loved and whom God has guided. And they've gathered for this meal to tell the story. This, what we call the Seder meal, that Jewish people still practice today on Passover, where they eat bitter herbs and they tell the story of the bitterness of slavery, of they taste salt water to remember the bitterness of the tears that ran down their faces. At the Seder meal, at that Passover meal, there will be unleavened bread eaten because in Exodus we are told the people are commanded not to even take time for your bread to rise, to bake it without the leaven so that you and your rush can leave. And for thousands of years the story is told again and again and again and this Thursday night, when Jesus has gathered his disciples together, it's another time of tremendous fear and tremendous worry where Jesus is going to tell them of betrayal and of crucifixion and of their life going out of control. Now remember, these are followers who have not yet experienced Easter. They only know that Jesus, if he dies... He will die. But in the midst of that uncontrolled worry and fear and bumbling and bungling of disciples, Jesus reaches into the meal and redefines the people and creates a brand new covenant a brand new promise, a brand new story to which the people can cling in the midst of change and worry and fear. 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Another binding and defining meal that is gathering the people together as God reaches into the world. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. What a thing to say that even death does not have the final claim on us. The one thing that we have always joked that the two things certain life are death and taxes is being questioned here. That not even death is certain through this present one named Jesus the Christ. So we come to another Monday Thursday unique to each of us who have never experienced a pandemic of this scale. And we hear about meals that sustain us. Traditionally, we have Holy Communion together on this night. We bring back our First Communion students who received First Communion earlier in the year, and they would be helping us strip the altar And for weeks, we have been pondering, what do we do in this spiritual hunger, in this time when we do not gather, and what do we do with the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ? And so tonight, I give you an invitation, as in this particular time, we have a history that is behind us, because you may not know that 500 years ago, The Lutheran Reformation was birthed in the midst of pandemic as the Black Plague was raging through Europe where people often could not gather in rooms such as this that people gathered in their homes. And so in our Lutheran tradition, Holy Communion became Holy Home Communion. I'd like to read a letter that our Bishop of the South Dakota Synod, Bishop Constanza Hagmeyer, shared with all of the congregations as we plan how to celebrate Holy Communion together this Easter in a few days. I'd like to read Bishop Hagmeyer's words. Many of you have asked about the sacrament of Holy Communion in a time of pandemic. Communion traditions have and still greatly vary throughout South Dakota. Some of us celebrate Holy Communion once a month. Others come to the Lord's table every Sunday. While communion practices vary from one location to the next, we share common understandings. We believe that Christ is really present in, with, and under bread and wine when we gather around the sacrament of the altar. Following Martin Luther's directive, we also believe that in times of emergency and pandemic, we can celebrate the sacraments, baptism and communion, in the privacy of our homes with those around us. So, as she continues, Christ's promise of forgiveness of sins and new life will nourish us just like it does when we physically gather as the body of Christ In Matthew 18, 20, Jesus assures us that where two or three are gathered, he will be among us. And she goes on to offer grace and peace as we walk through this time. So this is an invitation that this Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, I invite you to gather elements of bread and wine or grape juice and to gather around your table And you will be sent in our weekly e-newsletter tomorrow basic instructions on what you would say. And you'll receive it in the mail on Saturday if you don't receive our email communications. And you'll say the words of institution and you'll say the Lord's Prayer and you'll share communion with one another in your home. We won't be practicing the rite in the sanctuary here, but we invite you in your own time, in your own place, 
to set aside this holy home communion that you may be fed. If you have questions, feel free to call and send me, or send me messages, but you'll receive instructions tomorrow. And then you'll be invited in our congregation's tradition is to receive Holy Communion weekly, to weekly partake in that meal until this pandemic time is ended and we can share the meal together once again. But in that meantime, may you know the deep, deep comfort food, not just of bread and wine, but the deep, deep comfort that Christ is present with us. And what this leads to is a deep resolve to do those acts of love and to live lives of faith in the midst of worry at the exact moment when we ourselves may feel least capable that we have the resources on our own to do that because we do not need those internal resources just ourselves that God provides those, God will provide the comfort and the resolve to follow the new commandment, to love. Because we love simply because we have been first loved, claimed, comforted, and shaped by Christ himself. So brothers, sisters, friends in Christ, you are in my prayers, you're in Deacon Christie's prayers, You are in each other's prayers. Love one another in this time. Remind one another of the goodness of the Lord in the presence of worry. Because really, we have been down this road before. It may look different. The new stories are different. But for thousands of years, we have known the story of being faithful people and living in unsure times. Because one thing is certain, that Christ is real. Christ is present, and Christ has made promises to us that we will live with him. So I end this sermon today with the words of Monday, Thursday, with that commandment that binds and defines us in love. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you may love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. With all our imperfections and all of our meals and us walking the best way that we can, may we be lifted up by the promise that God will throw Amen, and God bless you all.
We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Suffering, Lord, during this contemplative season, we ponder how much you gave up on our behalf. Sometimes we are moved, awed, or shocked by what you are willing to do for those whom you love. Keep our eyes on you throughout these days and uplift us when the journey becomes difficult. Lord, in your mercy, source of all love on the night of his betrayal Jesus gave up gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us write this commandment on our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all Lord in your mercy hear our prayer congregation, for its people and its ministries. We pray for our nation and all people. Fill us with your spirit so that we might more perfectly reflect the servant love of Jesus to one another and to our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. accept our prayers for all that we do not yet understand and hold us in your steadfast embrace whenever we stumble hear us for the sake of Jesus our Savior and our Lord Amen Tonight you have heard the Lord's voice calling to you, to rightness, to wholeness, to purity, to God. The gift of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is free for everyone. We hear God's voice in joy, knowing we are unworthy. We hear God's voice in sorrow, knowing we are the cause of Christ's sufferings. We hear God's voice in peace, knowing we are free to live forgiven. The removal of everything that adorns the altar is symbolic of Jesus' humiliation at the hands of the soldiers. Psalm 22, which you will hear sung, reflects the humiliation as well as the other themes related to Christ's passion.